Hi and welcome to Hartwood Turning in the Stable Studios. Today's video is uh, about the steady rest. Now, I've made this one already that I've got on the lathe. I've got another one on the table which is in the production uh, mode if you like. And uh, I will talk you through how I made this steady rest by demonstrating it on the, the second one. The inspiration for this video came from uh, Mr. Mike Walt who I'll link in the description. Um, thanks to Mike for that. Without further ado, let's get over to the lathe, have a quick look at this this uh, this steady rest, and then we'll proceed with the build. Right, so here we go, there's the steady rest. That's the completed model. Um, what we'll want to do now is go through the uh, the individual parts, uh, but I'll do that on the table. This is what it looks like when it's finished, um, and we'll come back to the finished model a little bit later on in the video. Okay, so let's try and go through some of the parts that are required for the, uh, for the steady rest. Now, obviously, you're going to need a circle. And I have got two pieces of three quarter inch ply here. Oh, do it there. Two pieces of three quarter inch ply uh, cut roughly to a circle. Uh, and that circle is, for my lathe, is 20 inches. Because that's the the, uh, the maximum size of a diameter piece I can put on my lathe is 20 inches. Now, if your lathe is smaller than that, you need to make this obviously, you need to make the size obviously to suit. Right, the, what, some of the important things that you need to note are if you're going to have three uh, support arms, you're going to make, have to make this angle between here and here 120 degrees. Obviously, if you wanted four, you'd have, it would be different. It would be 90, wouldn't it? But I'm going to do three. So this angle between here and here is 120 degrees. Now, I just use my angle finder, set one line, from the centre out to the circumference. And then took my angle finder, measured 120 degrees, on out round, brought it round, and then drew another line. And did the same thing from that line, back, well, I did it from here, and then went back right to there. So as I've got three uh, sections at 120 degrees. Then I used my compass to draw the inner circle. So that's the inner circle that we are going to cut out shortly on the lathe. And I just drew that. And that, for my lathe, is going to be 18 inches. This portion from the uh, inner, inner circle line on out to the edge will be 50 mil by the time I've just trimmed this up on the lathe um, to uh, make it nice and round. And I've also, in this case, I've had this on the lathe already, and I've marked out one of the support block places so as I know where the support block has to be fitted. So this is a support block, and that'll be screwed and glued onto here. And you'll notice there's a little bit of the circle cut out there. We're going to miss a little bit of the circle. But it also means that this is slightly raised above the the bed of the lathe. You don't want it sitting on the lathe. You want this to sit on the bed of the lathe, not the circle. So that's the first piece. Uh, and the way I've attached it is I've got a faceplate ring on the inside. Oh, let's bring that over there. Faceplate ring on the other side which I'll use to mount on the lathe to help me true up the outside circle and then set this inside circle using the beading and parting tool. But we'll come on to that after a while. Right, so that's how I'll look at the other component pieces of it. There are uh, quite a few other main pieces. So first and foremost, we've got the support arms. We'll, we'll need three of these. And I've made them and I've marked them up A1, A2 and A3. I haven't done anything about sanding them up or anything. And I'm going to show you just in a second how I made these. We'll throw them up there. The next piece we need are two support blocks. So they're the they're going to be the base of the steady rest, which I'll show you in this camera again. There are the two uh, support blocks, one either side of the, the circles. And those are those are the width of your bedways. That's the width of my bed waist, which in, in my lathe is eight inches. And I'm making these, I think they're two and a quarter or something. Let me just see, do it in mils, 60 mil. Yeah, so both of them are 60 mil. I have pre-drilled them. Um, that's the glued sides. So they're pre-drilled and one set of screws goes on the outside lines and one set of screws goes on the inside lines because they're going to be screwed together like that. Because the screws don't hit each other. 
That's the support blocks. We, we then have the bedway guide. So this piece is the, the is exactly the same width as my bedways, less of a mil. So the gap in between your bedways, less of a mil. So that it, it, it moves, can slide in and out, you can lift it in and out, uh, but it doesn't wobble too much. Um, and I've got a hole drilled in the centre of it, which is an 8 mil hole, which will take this 8 mil bolt later. I'll come on to that again later. And this is the little locking plate that I have for uh, on my lathe. So that will be mounted underneath that with the bolt. And then when you put it on your lathe, all you do is swivel that across. So that's a locking plate, if you like. So let's put that on there as well. And they're, they're all just made out of ply and uh, scrap bits of wood that I had left lying about in the workshop. I'll show you them on the completed one again, so it's just so you can see that. There's the locking block. That's the little locking block. This is fixed. It's screwed and glued. Both, uh, uh, and there's four screws on it holding it in and glued as well into place. So that's a bedway bar and this is the locking bar. And you just lock it down with thumbs. Is that making sense? I oh, hope it is. So the next time we need then is wheels. And these wheels came from Amazon. And I'll put the link in the description as well where the wheels came from. So uh, what I've got is a set of inline skate wheels. Uh, they come in the box, there's eight of them. And they come in the box like this. Little uh, six mil nylon insert, bush washer, whatever you want to call it. Um, to which I've mounted a little six mil bolt. And I'll show you that in, in greater detail a, bit, a little bit later on. I've got three of them ready to go. So we'll just set them over. And the last thing we need is some locking handles. Again, these locking handles came from Amazon and I'll put the link in the description. Um, these are just little threaded locking screws. So the, the, the only important thing about these is you need to make sure your bolt is exactly the right length and I had to cut these to suit. Um, but we'll, again, we'll describe that a little bit more detail when we get that a little bit further on in the construction process. And the last one we need, that's there's an M6, this is an M8. This is the main locking uh, screw that holds the piece, that holds the steady rest onto the lathe. So the next thing I want to do then is um, show you how to make one of these little arms. And we'll do that. I've set up a little jig for that and we'll change the camera position and we'll have a look at that. So to produce, to produce one of these is fairly simple, guys. Um, all we need to do is uh, we, we start with a, a square piece of wood, not a square piece, an oblong. And it is uh, two inches wide or 50 mil. And this one is 25 mil long or 25 centimeters long. And if you want that in inches, it's roughly just under 10 inches. But that'll depend on the size of your lathe again. You need to kind of work that out for yourself. So basically what all I've done is I've marked it out here. I've marked the hole where I want to put the wheel. So that's where the wheel's going to attach. And then what I need is a slot in here. So to make the slot, I've, I've made myself a little jig here that's on just screwed onto the table. A couple of bits of, ply, uh, of plywood, the same size. And I'm just going to slip that, slot that in there, wrong way, in there. And I just use a little screw on the end there. And that just holds that in place, stops it coming back and forward. And I'm going to use my little router. So this little palm router. And I have, I've already marked it on my palm router how deep I have to go. But I can't do it in one pass, so we'll go do it in two or three passes. So we'll set the palm router so it's just taking about two or three mil just to get us a start. And I've also got a line marked over here, and I've got a sides stop here that tells me how far over I can bring that. And that should put me right in the middle. So if I just uh, get that set, switch that on, a little plunge router. So we'll just start at this end. Plunge that in. Bring it to bring it to this end, and then run it all the way to the far end. So 
have a quick look at that. And that leaves us with a nice slot cut down through the middle, which we can just sand up quickly. Get rid, get rid of any little fuzzies. And that's what it looks like. The next thing we need to do now is drill our hole. So we'll drill a six mil hole in there and then we'll do our, we'll move our corners. But we'll change the camera again just for a second. So here about the drill press, we've got our item securely held in a little vise and I'm just going to swing it around to there so the arm is actually touching the post. Line up the drill press. There we go. Uh, we'll just drill a hole in there. And that's as simple as that, really. So there we've got a little hole for the wheel to go in and a slot for it to travel up and down on. So let's go over to the... I'll just move you over here quickly. Move you over to the sander. And we're just going to switch on the extractor. Switch on the sander. And we're just going to take away these little corners. And that's that piece done. So Have nice. another little look at this. What I need to do now is I need to cut this inside circle and remove all this bit. So as we're left with the two outside circles. Now I've got them screwed so as it won't fall apart. And I've got them mounted on the on a faceplate ring. So I'm going to use the faceplate ring, mount it onto my Robert Sorby chuck. And I'm going to cut this edge and just make it slightly smaller than it is. And then I'm going to use the uh, beading and parting tool, or the parting tool, sorry, to cut most of the way through uh, both layers of ply. Just about to about the last lamination, if you like. So let me mount this on the, on the lathe here first. That's that on. Make sure it's nice and clear that it can rotate. That's fine. I'm going to use my face shield for this because this stuff flies everywhere. And we'll put the extractor on too because it's it's a bit messy this. You can see can we try and catch some of the dust, but I doubt if we can. Bring up our tool rest. And the first thing we'll do is we'll, tr we'll treat the outside. And we'll just do the outside with the bowl gauge. There we go. I'm just going to take my half inch bowl gauge and I've got a little line in there, I don't know if you can see it very well, but I need to take a couple of mil off of this. Nothing wrong with having belt and braces. There we go. That just gives it a little added security. And we'll start that rotating again. So we can probably get this run up to about five or 600, it'll be okay. There's 600 revs and we'll just take a little skimming off this edge. Well, it's hard to cut. And that's just a, a nice uh, edge. Just sand the edge off a little bit. And that's that. That's the outside finished. That'll do. And now we'll use our parting tool and we'll just go cut through that. One thing I forgot to do is I'm supposed to put a screw in here just to hold this outer ring on because we don't want that to fall off first. 
So we'll get three screws and we'll put a screw through that. This bit's going to get cut out anyway, so we don't need this bit, it's a sacrificial piece. So we'll just screw that through there. We're just going to measure the depth of this little groove now. You see how we're, where we are. And we're through the first ring, which is good. And what we'll do is we'll just set this to the depth we want. You could have easily just um, drill the hole through here and cut it with a jigsaw. But I like doing it on the lathe. Or you could have cut it on a bandsaw. That should do. That leaves me with about two mil to cut off. And I'm going to do that with my uh, my jigsaw. And we'll show you that just in a second. Cool. And what I've done is I've drilled a hole through here, turned over the other side, and there's a hole coming through there. And I have the circle marked on the outside just to cut off the last little portion of that. So if I can get that saw blade again there. And we'll just run that round there. So I'm just kind of following Pete's rule of thumb there. He says, if you've got tools, you might as well use them. <laughs> so if I just unscrew that. So you could have cut that out completely with a jigsaw. Or you could have done what Mike did in his, in his uh, little video. He actually just cut it out in the bandsaw. So, so that's our two out. rings cut. Uh, all we have to do now is detach them. But what we want to do before we take them apart is make sure that we mark where these pieces go so they're in the right places on the circles. So the easiest way I found to do that, if I take a square and just drop that down over that edge, that comes to there. And if I put a mark in there and call that A, a to A. So this section is A, and I've marked this section as A. So we've got A, B, and C. And they can be matched back together again. So now you might have taken the screws out here. And we'll take this ring over to the bandsaw and cut these out. So now we're at the bandsaw, we'll switch on the extractor. And we'll switch on the bandsaw. And we'll just leave, and what I'm going to do is leave the lines on. Push the bandsaw off, push the extractor off. So there we've got our three pieces, A, B, and C. A, B, and C. And we'll go back over to the table and we'll reassemble that the bandsaw. And all we've done is we've got our little arms and we've placed them in the correct places. A1, A2, and A3. And we've got our sections. This is section B. And all I've done is I've drilled three holes in it and I've put a little screw through it. And we're going to use these to guide it back into place. So these need to be glued and screwed to make it nice and uh, secure. So what I'll do is I'll get some glue first. And then we'll just glue these in. And get them in position and screw them. And then we'll have to leave it for a while. So I'm sure you've all seen glue going on before. But I'm just going to use a... So I'm going to glue, glue right, up, right up to the line there. And I'll just put a... Good covering the glue on there. And I'm just using tight bond 
and it's just the end, the indoor one because I don't I don't envision this getting wet. Just give it a quick rub on my finger. Make sure we've got a nice coat of glue. As you see, I've got them set out A, B, C, so they don't get confused. And every good, every good joiner or wood turner, when they get their finger nice and covered in glue, you just wipe it on your trouser. Perfect. And her indoors goes mad, but who cares? So line that up with its, with its cut marks, there and there, and screw that back into place. I'm ready really to give these a little bit of a sand. So we'll just drive these screws in nice and tight. And if we've got a little bit of excess glue there, we'll just wipe that off with a cloth. And I'll go around all three bits of this and I'll come back to you when all that's done and glued. We'll have another look at it. So now, important things to note, these have got numbered A1 to A1. And A2 to A2 and A3 to A3. Now, we're just going to have to let that set, and then we'll test these again to make sure that they fit all the way through. You may need a little bit of sanding just to make it nice, tight fit. We don't want it to be loose and wobbly. So that's them. They're all set. So I just need to leave that to the side now and allow that to dry. That needs 24 hours to dry, so we'll come back to that. In the meantime, we have to put the wheels on here. So to put the wheels on, Let's grab our wheels. One, two, three. Uh, wheels have got a lock and nut on them. And a little washer. Now, as I suggested before, the wheels have got this little plastic insert, which brings the bearing down to five mil. Or sorry, six mil. So these are six mil, and these are a six mil hole. And all we have to do, put it on through there, and then, screw, and then screw that on. So I'm just putting a little washer in there. Doesn't really need it anyway. And these are nylock nuts. So once they're on, they're on. And I'll grab a spanner for that. So I just had these these little roofing bolts. These are little roofing bolts. And I had them to hand. So I just thought I'll just use them instead. So just screw that up. Nice and tight. And that's that done. That runs nice and smooth. And we're happy with that. So three then we do. We'll come back to you when we've done all three. So that's our three little wheels done. So bring this back over. And you'll see where they sit. A2 is over there. A3 is over there. And A1 is over there. Now, the next thing you need to do quickly is just mark the center of this uh, groove. So the pencil is six mil, which is handy. So if I just mark that through the center of the groove, that allows me to drill a hole in there to attach your locking lever. And we're going to do it halfway through. So we've got 50, well, that's, we've actually got 45 mil there. So 40, half of 45 is 22 and a half, which is there. It's not that vitally important. And now we need a, we need a six mil hole in there because this bolt comes from underneath. So what I do is I bring that bolt up from underneath and then I, t I take a little bolt and I countershrink it down into there so that it holds it in place and it never moves then. 
So we draw six mil hole first, and then we put a an eight mil drill just a little tiny bit in, just to counter, just enough as counter striking this bolt or this little nut. So I'll show you that uh, at the drill press. So now we're set up at the drill press, and I'm just going to drill the three six mil holes, and then we'll just counter sink it by hand. Um, so if I just switch this on, line up the first one. And just roll it all the way through. And that's those three. So back to the table again. And we'll uh, counter sync them and get them in the right place. Okay, so that's us back in the drill press. I've already went ahead and put two of these little bolts in. But what I'll do is I'll show you how to put this, how I put the last one in. Now you remember I said that we drilled a 6 mil hole and we put the, the bolt through. And then we had a little uh, 10 mil nut, it's a 6 mil nut, but it's 10 mil across to go in through there. But what I've done is, I, I, I've cheated a little bit. I've drilled a 10 mil hole in there and this nut now fits in there. So if I just pop that nut in there, if I can, get it nicely in that hole. We'll just, just give it a little gentle persuade with the hammer. And that's that recessed in there now. So I drilled the hole to 10 mil and I recessed the little bolt in. And I'm going to come in from underneath now. And I just have to screw that in now. Now, that's a, I'm not going to teach you how to suck eggs, guys. But there's the screw. And I'm just going to screw that in now. Now, and that's that's all three done. Now the last thing to do to get it to be as fully assembled then is to assemble the foot or the bit that fits on the, the bit that actually holds it onto the lathe. So we've got these blocks that we had earlier, and what I've done is I've, I've modified them slightly, and they now kind of fit the curve. So you see there, there's a little curve. I just chopped it off in the band, so no big deal. Marked it up with a pencil, cut it off with a bandsaw. So I've got one for side A, one for side B. And I've got it marked on here where it has to go. So we'll just pop that on there. And this time, because I've already dry fitted it, I can glue it on. So we'll glue that on now. And this is side A, which corresponds to this, which is side A. What we'll do is I'll just pre-fit the screws I'll bring them through. Bring them through a good bit so as I can see where they're going to go. So I've got the two screws. I can line up with two screw holes. There's one there. And the other one is about there somewhere. See it? There it is. And then I can bring that down. So back the screws back out again. Let them sit down in, then just screw that on up. Make sure they're nice and tight, and that should have squished some glue out. So we just get a cloth and wipe that off. Wipe off any excess glue. Save a little bit of sanding later and flip it over, and we'll do the same thing with the B side. So that's that bit, that's that. That's how it will sit on the lathe. Now, last bit we need to do then, is to get the, uh, the holding plate on. So this is the guide that fits between the bedways which fits on the bottom. Now, it's quite hard to show you this. So we'll put a little bit of glue on here. And what I will do is I'll put this little bolt up through from the bottom. This It's the wrong way around, but it doesn't really matter. It's just a guide. It's just to get it in the right place. So that's going in there. 
and then the central hole in the post will go in the central hole and then we can line up goes around that way we can line up the marks that we made to make sure that we're perfectly parallel so we need a 90 degree from here across here and that's it there and then we can screw that in now oops one screw so that's nicely screwed in and located Let's screw in a little bit further and this piece needs to come off of there now this piece actually fits on this side and that's the bit that turns and locks it onto the lathe so this piece is exactly the same that as just a mill or two smaller than the depth of your bedways and it fits the bedways exactly that way and then when you put it on your on your lace bed it just sits on like that you reach over and turn it and then if i take that off from there turn it around that way uh, can you still see that let's bring it into the middle we then have a little washer on here and the locking lever I take that a little locking lever which locks that in place so leave it up give it a little push down and this piece can move now so this piece can move and rotate and then once you lock it up so that's across the bed lock it up and it just pulls itself tight up against the bottom of your bed bars unlock it and it's a little bit tight so you just give it a little push down and, and it rotate and then you can lock it back up into place and then that's it ready to be taken off or onto the lift let's get rid of some of that glue there so that's the steady rest with its feet now and the last thing we need to do is add our arms so, so we've got the arms and um, we've got them all numbered a3 little wa little washer and a metal washer on top and a quick release um, handle screwed on A1 which is this side same detail little MDF washer and a metal washer that just holds it in place and we'll turn it around and do the other one go so they slide nicely back and forward now not a lot of movement in them which is fine screw that one into place now i need to leave this for 24 hours now to let it let it dry so there you go that's the steady rest that's it built and that's what it looks like so here we are we're back at the lathe um i've taken my smock off because we're not really uh, turning um, I just want to show you uh, on the lathe in situ just a quick recap of the parts we've got our three arms one two and three with a little uh, skateboard or inline skate wheels on them a little locking lever which you can operate and just slide the pieces up and down now once I start to use this what I'll do is I'll wax the inside of that joint so as it kind of slides a little bit better but they slide okay and they're not they're a little bit loose but not too loose and we can tighten them up so in order to fix it to the lathe remember we spoke about the uh, little locking plate on the bottom so if i just show you that how it operates here now so a little locking plate uh, this is your bed bar guide and that's the same width as your bed bars approximately within a mill or so and we've chamfered the little edge here so as it goes in easier and then all we do is we turn that and the bed bars lock into the place there i'll just going to show you that uh, when i mount it so we'll just leave it sitting in the middle for now lightly locked up set it onto the bed bars and then we can slide it up and down the bed bars at will so it can be slid right up to the move that out of the way slid right up to the end uh so it's on we've gone to chuck there if you like just slide it into place where we want it today 
and then I'll change cameras to there and we can have a look underneath and all I'm going to do is loosen the, the little uh, bolt on the top and then just turn rotate that so it's at, uh, it's at 90 degrees to the bed bars you'll see that it catches both sides of the bed bars oh, <laughs> it will if I hold it in place while I screw it up and then just screw it screw that up and lock it into place and that's it locked into place back to the uh, tailstock now you can see I've locked it into place with this screw here so that's locked into place and I can lift that and turn that out of the way so it's not in the way uh, of anything happening down here and all we have to do then is bring the legs up in contact the piece of wood from all three sides lock your little locking lever and if it's sticking out where you don't want it you can lift the lever up and just pop it back into where it, it makes it nice and tidy and that's that in place now if we just turn that by hand you'll see the contacts that one's not contacting so we'll just push it in a little bit further that should be it there we go switch the lathe on and that's our piece held in the steady rest. So if we're working at this end, we can work away at this end without it flexing too much. Uh, that's the whole idea of the thing. Now, I've just got a short piece in here. Obviously, this would probably be used further up the bed um, to add a bit of stability without having to use a tailstock. So there you go. That's the uh, steady rest build complete. Showed you how to take it. I'll just show you how you take it back off again. Um, back to that camera there. So just unlock the screw and then turn your plate. Get it lined up there. And then you can just lift it off then. If I undo the undo the arms. Slide it along and just lift it off. And it's as simple as that. That's how easy that is. That's been a, a nice build. I've enjoyed doing that. So that's that uh, steady rest build complete. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, I really do appreciate you clicking in uh, to my channel, giving it a thumbs up. And if you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing. So we'll see you on the next uh, video, um, probably next week. Thanks very much for watching.